Barnabas chapter 10 Spiritual significance of the precepts of Moses respecting different kinds of foods. Now, wherefore did Moses say, Thou shalt not eat the swine, nor the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the raven, nor any fish which is not possessed of scales? Footnote Codex Index has portion corrected, however, as above. See Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. He embraced three doctrines in his mind in doing so. Moreover, the Lord said to them in Deuteronomy, And I will establish my ordinance among this people. Is there then not a command of God that they should not eat these things? There is, but Moses spoke with a spiritual reference. For this reason he named the swine, as much as to say, Thou shalt not join thyself to men who resemble swine. For when they live in pleasure, they forget their Lord. But when they come to want, they acknowledge the Lord. And in like manner, the swine, when it has eaten, does not recognize its master. But when hungry, it cries out, and on receiving food, is quiet again. Neither shalt thou eat, saith he, the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the kite, nor the raven. Thou shalt not join thyself. He means to such men as know not how to procure food for themselves by labor and sweat, but seize on that of others in their iniquity, and although wearing an aspect of simplicity, are on the watch to plunder others. So these birds, while they sit idle, inquire how they may devour the flesh of others, proving themselves pests to all by the wickedness. And thou shalt not eat, he says, the lamprey, or nor the pipus, nor the cuttlefish. He means, thou shalt not join thyself, or be like to such men as are ungodly to the end, and are condemned to death. In like manner as those fishes above cursed float in the deep, not swimming on the surface like the rest, but make their abode in the mud which lies at the bottom. Moreover, thou shalt not, he says, eat the hare. Wherefore, thou shalt not be a corrupter of boys, nor like unto such. Footnote. Dressel has a note upon this passage in which he refers to words we have rendered, quote, corruptors of boys, unquote, to those who by their desolate lives waste their fortune and so entail destruction on their children. But this does not appear satisfactory. Compare Clemens, Alexandrite, P-A-E-D-A-G period, number 2, 10. End of footnote. Because the hair multiplies year by year, the places of its conception, for as many years as it lives, so many it has. Moreover, thou shalt not eat the hyena. He means thou shalt not be an adulterer, nor a corrupter, nor be like to them that are such. Wherefore, because that animal annually changes its sex and is at one time male and another female, moreover, he has rightly to test the weasel. For he means thou shalt not be like to those whom we hear of as committed wickedness with the mouth on account of their uncleanliness, nor shalt thou be joined to those impure women who commit iniquity with the mouth, for this animal conceives by the mouth. Moses then issues three doctrines concerning meats with the spiritual significance, but they receive them according to fleshly desire, as if he had merely spoken of literal meats. David, however, comprehends the knowledge of the three doctrines, and speaks in like manner. Blessed is the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly. Even as the fishes, referred to, go to, in darkness to the depths of the sea, and hath not stood in the way of sinners, even as those who profess to fear the Lord, but go astray like swine, and hath not sat in the seat of scorners, even as those birds that lie in wait for prey, take a full and firm grasp of this spiritual knowledge. But Moses says still further, He shall eat every animal that, that is cloven-footed and remunent. What does he mean? The remnant animals denotes him, who on receiving food recognizes him, that nourishes him and being satisfied by him is visibly made glad. Well spake Moses having respect to the commandment. What then does he mean? That we have to join ourselves to those that fear the Lord, those who meditate in their heart on the commandment which they have received, those who both utter the judgments of the Lord and observe them. 
those who know that meditation is a work of gladness and who remnant upon the word of the Lord. But what means the cloven footed? That the righteous man also walks in this world. He looks forward to that holy state to come. Behold how well Moses legislated. And how was it possible for them to understand or comprehend these things? We then, rightly understanding his commandments, explained them as the Lord intended. For this purpose he circumcised our ears and our hearts, that we might understand these things. End of chapter 10. Having been read by Peter John Parises.